and welcome to the video. So, about a month ago, I kind of threw out a quick survey on the channel asking you all uh, what you wanted me to kind of take a deep dive or look into next, and you all asked for the D, uh, the Behringer Model D, and I kind of regretted putting it on the survey because it's not something I've overly enjoyed working with myself privately, but uh, what the uh, crowd wants, the crowd gets. So. Uh, now you get a video on exactly why I don't exactly love the Behringer Model D. And uh, there's nothing wrong with it per se, it just it just does not fit my style or, or what I seek in a hardware instrument. And uh, I hope to uh, get into that in a little bit more in depth in this video, show you what it's like. So without further ado, uh, let's learn more about the Behringer Model D. So, if you're unfamiliar with the Behringer uh, Model D, Technically, it's pretty much a clone of the classic uh, Mini Moog synthesizer that came out, I believe, in the 70s. Sorry if I'm wrong. I should have notes, but it was it was one of the earlier kind of uh, standalone synthesizers, and it's been used by many, many famous artists. You know, Black Sabbath, Pink Floyd, uh, even 90s hip hop, all over the place. It's a very good synthesizer. So even though I don't particularly like it, it's not because of how it sounds or, or its usefulness. It is a good synthesizer and the Behringer Model D being a clone is a pretty damn good clone. It's pretty close, you know. I would challenge you uh, having them both set up properly side by side, a blind test, you're probably not gonna be able to tell which one is the OG uh, Moog and which one is the new uh, carbon uh, copy uh, Model D. So I think my dislike for this comes just from my, 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 my history and, and my personal preferences. So I don't have a ton of time with synthesizers. I've only been playing around with them for a couple of years. And my, my personal background is, uh, you know, I, I, I'm a computer nerd by day and um, a synthesizer player by night. And before I became a computer programmer, you know, back in the 90s, I was a DOS kid. You know, I, I, I like playing around with computers, I like playing around with software, I like figuring things out. So this is a pure analog machine. There is no computer in here. There is no programming. It's all on the knobs. It's all very analog and the sounds analog. So a lot of synthesizer players or, or musicians love pure analog just for the quality of the sound, you know, it, but it drives me nuts. I hate having the tune things exactly. I hate trying to get the knobs just set just right to get that sound. I like, I like having computer assistance, you know, I love uh, how the electron machines, you know, the digitac, or pardon about the digitac, the digitone, I can set the scale, I can have it so I don't have to worry about keying it in properly. I can use, I can use those computer features to my advantage. And being a computer person, being a digital person, digital, <laughs> but you know what I mean. But but be familiar with computers and digital stuff. I really like that. And th there's none of that on here. This is all just analog, baby. There's. You got the dials and that's it. You can't, you know, you can, you can, it's got MIDI in, but um, you can't send any MIDI messages beyond basically just notes and I think um, the mod wheel and maybe pitch wheel. Uh, you know, I can't program, you know, the filter to go, it's all me, right? So I, when I'm making music, when I'm playing around with my instruments, Everything I mostly have that I really enjoy is pure digital because I can program it. I can I can use my uh, my talents as a programmer mixed with my hobby as a musician to 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 really get where I want to be. So I think that's why I don't love this. It has nothing to do with the sound or the functionality set. It's just like I really like my music hardware and software uh, where I can take advantage of a computer or a computer interface to make music. And I think that's why I had such a, not a hard time of it, but I was not excited for the last month to come down here and work on this. I kind of pushed through it because I said I would. And, you know, I made some fun little drum loops and drum sounds and, and you know, really gave it a good try. But I, but you know, I, I wasn't, before I did this, I wasn't sure why I disliked this so much, but doing this last month, I think, I think that's it. And the one time I really enjoyed working with this was teaming it up with the Digitact. Why? Well, because you know I love saving patches. I love I love sound design, but I always get frustrated with these things because 
There's, you can't save patches on here. Once you're done, you're done, right? If you if you move the knobs, it's lost to time. And I, if I spend, you know, 20, 30 minutes coming up with a sound I really like, I don't want to lose that to time. So, you know, with the Digitact, I was able to sample it in and, and get the best of both worlds there. So I think moving forward, I don't know. I'm probably going to sell this, I'm thinking, just because why well, keep it if I don't like it? Thankfully, I got it for a pretty good deal. So it's, it's be easy to get my money back for it, I think. But maybe I'll do some more sampling of it for a little bit. Anyways, um, let's get into uh, some of the fun I, I, I had of it over the month. So you can get a feeling for it yourself and see if it's something you might like. And also just a little tour of the sounds it can do. I, I hope this helps. So, being a synth I don't exactly love, uh, the Model D was looking a little rough when I pulled it away under my desk here to start playing around with. Uh, Pretty damn gross, actually. Anyway, so I need to get this thing cleaned off. So thankfully for Christmas, uh, my mother-in-law was kind enough to give me the world's smallest vacuum as a little stocking stuffer. And I was completely oblivious when I got him like, uh, thanks, like kind of funny gag gift. And I think I was on like a Reddit looking at the synthesizer Reddit. And somebody mentioned they got one of these and it was great for cleaning synths. I'm like, oh, that's why she got me the damn thing. But uh, unfortunately, trying it out, I wasn't amazed by the results. Maybe this thing is just too damn dirty and dusty, but uh, it wasn't cutting it. So I went to more practical methods of uh, attempting to clean it. Uh, I grabbed one of my paint brushes. Actually, I think this is one of my more expensive ones by accident, which I probably wrecked rubbing it on all this uh, dust. And it was just too dusty, you know? So, you know, what I found actually worked best for cleaning was just simple water and cloth. No, to uh, viewers, don't put your water so close to the damn synthesizer as I learn, as it splashes all over it there. But uh, the cloth and water was definitely the trick uh, for getting most of this mess cleaned up. And then I just used the paintbrush around the uh, knobs and switches to, to get that extra level of dust off. I, I mean, this basement is a dust haven, and it's uh, it's an, always an issue with me. Uh, you'll notice as I shoot throughout the month here, it's going to get dustier and dustier again. Uh, yeah, that's the, now I gotta clean. So with it now cleaned, it is time to start making some sounds like this awesome uh, pirate chanty I came up with uh, randomly. Um, yeah, so that was my task here. Is I wanted to just take a month, uh, see what type of sounds I could come up with, maybe some drum loops. Uh, just basically see what this puppy can do so uh, no pressure uh, I, I spent the month I started messing around with the sounds and uh, you know I had more fun than I expected to have but uh, it's a good synthesizer like it can make a lot of great sounds but maybe we before we get too in depth of how I feel about it let's just go over how this damn thing works quickly uh, let's just go into how it works a little bit so um, it's a pretty straightforward synthesizer. It doesn't look like it if you don't have much uh, experience with synthesizers, but uh, it can be it can look a little intimidating. But technically, it is pretty simple on how it works. You know, you start off with this oscillator bank section, and really, what this oscillator bank section gives you is uh, three different oscillators that you can play with. So it is a it is a mono synth. It is so there's only one voice. But technically, with the three different oscillators, you can detune them slightly from each other and make chords, or uh, have nice leads or bass lines with, uh, with with that monosynth functionality. So, you know, you can turn them uh, basically right here. These this red thing allows you to turn the uh, oscillators on and off. So if you just want one oscillator, you just turn one on, and then if you want all of them on, you flip them there. You can also add in uh, uh, volume from another source into the sound or uh, you know just noise pink or white noise so that's kind of your oscillator and mixer section there uh, beyond that it also has a really cool filter uh, uh, section as well and uh, the filter on this thing sounds excellent and you can really get some nice sounds out of it It 
one thing that really helped me when I was playing around with it was this patch library online. And uh, you can find it by just going burying your D uh, patches. It comes up as one of the first Google results. Here are some of the uh, drum uh, sounds I found on there. You know, I came up with some of my own for the drum room. Uh, the thing you're hearing right now is just a filter. It's not drums from the uh, the Model D, but uh, I've, there's a lot of great patches on there. That's how I came up with the initial uh, Pink Floyd sound you heard at the beginning there and some of these other sounds. Um, but what I love to do is dial these sounds in and then capture them quickly on my Digitax here and, and save the samples. And then I, you know, this is great to just get some drum sounds into the Digitax out of the Model D. And then after getting those drum samples in, um, what you're hearing right now is actually something I composed on the Digitact using drums uh, sounds specifically from the Model D. And I was pretty impressed with how it came out, you know. Um, with the with the Digitact, I was able to use its LFOs to, to, and its effects a little bit to, to give it a little bit more of a, an effect there. And additionally, beyond that, um, I actually recorded from the uh, Digitact into my DAW here and had a wet and dry signal from the uh, Digitact. The wet signal, you can see I applied some effects there and your gives you the recording you're hearing now. So I found this to be a very uh, nice combo, these two machines together. All right, final thoughts on Mr. Mini Moog here. So I think Behringer is gonna be pretty happy of what they produced here. Uh, they set out to basically clone one-to-one -one the Mini Moog and I think you can probably say they're fairly successful in doing that, at least to my ears. Um, I don't have a Mini Moog, but the sounds that I heard coming from a Mini Moog, I'm able to pretty, if I have a patch knows how to do it, I'm able to uh, replicate it pretty easily using this. So in that case, I think they were successful when they went out to do. My personal thoughts on it, um, I'm, I'm debating if I should keep it or not. And the debate is, is I don't really have anything purely analog in my synthesizer hardware, to be honest, I have the I have the Korg, uh, um, the pardon me, the Korg Volca keys, but uh, it's it's more of a fun thing. It, you can definitely get more versatility out of this than the Korg Volca keys, but the Korg Volca keys is, is mobile and, and a little bit easier to use and a little bit more quick and immediate than this. But this is pretty damn immediate too. There's no, not a heck of a lot going on here. Where you can't dial in sounds pretty fast beyond getting the tuning right. That's the one thing I like about. Uh, the the Korg uh, both keys it kind of has a uh, auto tune on there so you don't have to worry about tuning everything it's, if it works correctly uh, it's supposed to keep the uh, keep the oscillators in tune for you uh, you don't have this here in fact that's one of the biggest things I hear people bitching about this thing is that it's it's hard to keep the oscillators in tune um, I guess that was the case the original Mini Moog so. That's where well, some of my complaints come is yes, they have cloned the Mini Moog and if you have enough uh, people and, and intelligence to open up the Mini Moog and clone the uh, hardware within, anyone could do that. What would have been nice is if Behringer could have modernized it a bit for the uh, 21st century, you know. How sweet would it have been if through MIDI you could control all these dials? That would make it a dream machine for me versus what it is now. If I could, you know, program in all the MIDI settings in here, have some patches saved up in like uh, either on the Digitac or in my DAW and be able to quickly zone this in to right where I wanted it. I would love this thing. I would not be debating getting rid of it at all. So. But that's not what it is. It's a clone of the old hardware, and uh, and so you got to accept it as it is. So if you want a Mini Moog and you don't want to spend thousands of dollars to get a physical one, bang, here's your guy. What I want to do next is I actually have the Arturia uh, Virtual um, Synth Collection, the Virtual, um, well, let's see, where I'm looking for, Vintage, <laughs> the Virtual Vintage Synth Collection, which includes their kind of idea of this in uh, VST form. So. What I think is going to be the make or break for this guy is because I don't have anything else in my collection that really can make hardware wise these pure analog sounds like this can. How good is Arturia's, um, you know, take on this? Is it like in the same ballpark 95%? If so, I'm going to sample this. I'm going to sample this and uh, uh, sample the hell out of this thing and, and, and uh, probably sell it. If I, the VST is just a little bit off, you know, the this sounds better I might just keep this in the closet so when I do need that specific analog classic Moog kind of sound 
I'll pull this out and use it for projects or wherever I need there. You know, I only spent 250 bucks on it. I could probably make my money back, but then if I want to get that analog sound again, I'm not going to have to spend way more than 250 bucks to, to get this again or something else. Uh, I'm interested in some of the other machines uh, Behringer has. I saw an article the other day that they have 50 plans since that they've announced and, and so there's a lot of stuff there hoping to ship out. We'll see if any of it comes to light. Maybe some of those will be cheaper, uh, better suited for me and give me that analog sound that this does. I don't know. We'll see. So that's where I'm at and I hope this helped. Uh, basically, you know what? If you want a copy of the Mini Moog, it's hard to go wrong with this and you don't have thousands of dollars to buy the original Mini Moog. Uh, go nuts. I don't think you're going to be uh, unhappy with this at all. Uh, but if you're like me and you caught into the hype of everyone saying, oh, this is such a great synth and it's so cheap and you, you can have a mini Moog now, well, I think the lesson I've learned here is to just uh, don't get caught up so much in the hype uh, and the marketing. Uh, analyze what the synthesizer can do, see if I need it, and go from there. Thankfully, and you know, I, I, w I wasn't going to buy it, it anyways. I only bought it because it was basically almost half off, and I don't don't regret that terribly. But uh, it's it's an it's an interesting lesson, and it has taught me a lot of things about what I like about synthesizers. So take it what you, take it as you will, and um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions or if this is if uh, yeah, just give me your feedback below. I appreciate uh, all of it, and I hope you guys guys and gals and whoever's out there have a wonderful day thank you very much and i'll see you next time